Welcome to the Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Thrive Fantasy. Here's your host, Casey Bubba and Scott Bodman. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Pre-Snap Podcast, brought to you by the wonderful people at Lion Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Lion Star App and at Lion Star NFL and download the app in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Get everything you need in the palm of your hands to build your winning DFS lineups. We've got your week two on us. Week one in the books. Wild, weird, fun week one. We have week two, and we don't get to play the Chiefs this week, which really sucks because I said it. You stack them, and they did it again. They just, <laughs> like If you look at the millionaire winners, they there's two millionaire contests. They won one of them. They almost won two. It's just what this, the thinking Chiefs do. But before we get to all that, before I vent and we throw over game by game, you can find me on Twitter at BD and drink my coast, as always, on Twitter at Bogman Sports. Scott Bogman, how we doing, man? I'm doing great. I am rip roaring and ready for another week of football. Week one was amazing, wasn't it? It was so just fun. the best. The Steelers win, the Browns lose, the Ravens lose on national television. The only way it could have got better is uh, if the Bengals would have lost too. But we had uh, escalator of happiness instead of escalator of sadness. So I guess we'll live with that. The you know uh, three out of four ain't bad. Hey, Dolphins went into Foxborough and got a win. I'm always yeah, happy yo, with that. I mean, you'll take that always after the last happy. two decades, yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't care if it was pretty or not. A dub's a dub, <laughs> and it was good to be us for once. So Absolutely. Um, I, I will take that all day, and Mac Jones is going to be good. That's all i got to say. Like, I might not get another win in Foxborough for another 12 years. But <laughs> <laughs> take enjoy. the one that you got. Yeah. Absolutely. If this, if this game would have happened in like week eight, I might not have got a dub. <laughs> so yeah, he, he's going to be good, folks. You guys did good. The Niners screwed that one up already, even though Lance might be fine. They screwed that one up. So, yep, that's fun. <laughs> Let's get to it, though, Boggs. Week two, we got your DraftKings Fandle picks for you. 13-game main slate, obviously. You listen to this because it came out on Friday. Thursday's in the books. Um, and we don't do the primetime games Sunday and Monday either. So we got your 13 games, main slate, lots of fun in this one, to say the least. And we kick things off in the NFC South with a little bit of uh, Atlanta at Tampa Bay. You know, no big deal here. Over-under is only 11.5. Total's 52. What do you like in here, Bogman? I mean, uh, Atlanta and Tampa Bay, it's all on the Bucks side. Bucks defense definitely in play uh, at 4,100 4, on DK, 4,500 uh, might be the best play. But uh, I like both running backs here. Uh, you know, Fournette is cheap option at 5,100, 4,800. I know they said that, uh, you know, Tomato Face said that uh, Ronald Jones is going to start over there, but. It's Fournette's going to get the most snaps, and this Atlanta defense is porous. We saw Miles Sanders run on them. Kenny Gainwell scored a touchdown. They let up touchdowns to you know, a bunch of rushing yards to Jalen Hurts. We know Brady's not going to do that, but Brady can sit back and pick them apart because they have no pass rush. Everyone is in play on Tampa Bay. I would say no one is in play on the Atlanta side. I love Kyle Pitts. I love Calvin Ridley, and they should be playing from behind, which normally adds up to good stuff, but... I don't know, man. I think Shaq Barrett or JPP might knock Matt Ryan's head off, so I don't want any part of the Falcons this week. Yeah, it's a, it's a rough one. On paper, you'd want to bring it back with some garbage time, but I'm kind of feeling the same way. Other places to go on this 13-game slate, like if you're multi-entering, sure, you want to get a little piece of this action. If you're keeping it simple, probably not. I'm probably just fading the entire game because it should be they should run the ball, like you said, should limit the pass attacks. They shouldn't need to throw it. The one thing I will say, I think AB is still too cheap. I think he's too cheap. Flip side, if you want to play devil's advocate here, I will say this could be a nice Mike Evans week because Tom Brady does make his guys happy. And we saw how last week went. Like They gave him chances. He didn't produce. But Godwin and AB went off on national television. Wouldn't be shocked if we see Mike Evans having a nice little game in this one. But uh, overall, I want nothing to do with it as well. 100% on the same page as my co-host here, my good buddy, Scott Bogman. Buffalo at Miami as we go to the AFC East in this one. Buffalo goes into Miami as minus three and a half road favorites over under 47 and a half. Bogman, you, I told you on the bet show, Josh Allen owns the Miami Dolphins. Are you going with Allen? I mean, I think you can. So he's definitely in play here. I don't know that he's going to be my number one option. Honestly, I would rather go with uh, with Brady than him. And Brady's a little bit cheaper on both sites. Uh, no, actually, he's more expensive on FanDuel, but uh, at least on DK, he is a little cheaper. So I think I'd rather go with Brady. Um, there's not a lot of love in this game because neither one of these offenses looked like they were uh, on pace last week. I, I, you know, Buffalo's defense is cheap at 2,500 against a little bit of a shaky Tua. That could be in play. 
Uh, I think Diggs is probably always in play. I like Will Fuller at 4,800 and 5,700. He's okay. But I think, think for the most part, I'm going to avoid this game. Yeah, it does feel like another avoid. I will say Allen with like a Diggs Beasley com com uh, combo can be good. Beasley continues to be a PPR machine. So at least in DK, is much more valuable than on FanDuel. Gabriel Davis is banged up. Emmanuel Sanders is going to start getting his eventually too. So if you want to like just get some cheap pieces of like Sanders or Beasley, I don't mind the Buffalo defense, like you said. And then on the flip side, I, I like the fact Will Fuller's back. He's only 48 on DK, 57 on FanDuel. He could end up having a nice big one because Tua does like to go deep. At least he showed that at Bama. They haven't really let him show it at Miami yet. But uh, overall, I want to stay away, even though I know in the back of my head, and I've said it a million times this week, Josh Allen owns the Dolphins. Like he just does. And I've seen him just destroy like 30 plus fantasy points type performances, and it's not even close. So we'll see how that one plays out. Next game on the slate, Cincinnati at the Chicago Bears. Chicago minus one and a half on this one. Over under 45. Andy Dalton at home against his former club. Are you going to use him in, in, in DraftKings or FanDuel this week? No. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't think you were going to be able to get that out with a straight face at all. Um, I didn't. If you guys go to the Line Star YouTube channel, you know. <laughs> uh, I, look, Dave Montgomery, I think, is a good play in this game. at 6,100, 7,300. Uh, you brought it up on the betting show yesterday that Allen Robinson should have a bounce back game. I like him. I think Darnell Mooney is a great buy at 42 and 65 against a rough, uh, defense in, in uh, Cincinnati here. And I like Cole Komet. See, I like all these receiving options. I, I got to say, so get behind got... <laughs> in, so I guess maybe in a tournament style, something you, you can do it. I just, it makes me sick to my stomach to want to take. It. I, I hope Justin Fields gets in there real soon. And Mac, if Matt Nagy wants to keep his job, he's going to have to put fields in sooner rather than later. Yep. I'm with you there. It, it's an interesting one. We saw Joe Mixon and company go off last week. Uh, Chase and Higgins had big games. Ian Uzuma had a little bit of appeal, different setup here. But the Bears, we just saw them get thrown on all over the place by the Rams. I'm not comparing the Bengals to the Rams, but I'm saying it's doable to an extent. So I think it's an interesting kind of side play if you want to go with like a Burrow with a Chase or Higgins. Then you can play a Robinson and someone else do like a little mini game stack here. Not saying it's the best game stack on the slate. There's many other ones to go with, but I definitely see the angle here because I think both these defenses are just bad enough to let some scoring take place. Like the over, I think the over is in play in this game. So we'll see how that one plays out. I wouldn't mind a little action, especially even and if you don't want to full stack it up, have a couple one offs from this game. I wouldn't be shocked if they go off. Dallas at the Chargers. This is one of the games I like quite a bit this week. Chargers are at home, minus three-point home favorites in this game, and we have a massive over, and I'm just scrolling because I'm an idiot here to find it for you. It's 55. I knew it was a big one. The over is 55, Bogman. So this is a game that everybody that just reads over-unders is going to stack because it's 55. Do you feel like stacking this game? Uh, I think you can. You know, uh, I, I think I picked this game to play a little bit to the under here, but uh, I, I like Dak. I like Zeke. I, I think Moore is going to go to Lamb this week, and he's cheaper than uh, Cooper at 64 and 68. So I like him. I think he's in play. Keenan Allen is in play every week. Every, doesn't matter, opponent, whatever. Unless it's Jalen Ramsey, Keenan Allen is in play. Um, not the biggest fan of Eckler. I, I don't know. Uh, Herbert could be in play as well here. Um, Jared Cook, I think at 3,900 is a decent one. And I think Dalton Schultz a little underrated at 3,300. So I don't know if I want to stack, but there are definitely pieces I like in this game. Yeah, no, I'm good with the stack here. I don't mind if you want to go Prescott or Herbert. If I have to pick one, I'm going with uh, Mr. A Bear in this one, <laughs> just because I think most will go to Dak, and usually for good reasons. They're, they're basically the same price, which makes it very easy to do. But, you know, Cooper and Lamb went off. I think Cedric Wilson's a great value. We talked about him on the uh, recap show with uh, Gallup going down. Wilson got some extra, like, I think he had four targets in the second half. I think if they're going to have to play from behind, if you're thinking it's going to be that kind of game script, then Wilson's very valuable at 31 on DK, 49 on Fandle. I think it's a very nice value play there to pair up with a Cooper or a Lamb. And then you mentioned Keenan Allen. We talked about it. The show is brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. One of the prop bets this week is over under 70 and a half re uh, receiving yards. Love that one. Smash it. Allen's a beast with Herbert. It's it's crazy what the relationship they've got going on there. And then Jared Cook can be a nice little value tight end if you want. So if you're stacking this game up, you can go either quarterback, but then uh, pick one of Cooper and Lamb, pair him with Cedric Wilson, 
bring it back with Allen and possibly Cook. That's where I'd be looking at on this one. Denver at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Denver is minus six heading into the Jags who got beat down by Houston, and the over-under is 45 and a half. So, Bogman, how do you see this one playing out for DFS? Hey, look, this is a game sack that I like. I like the the cheap uh, Broncos here. Uh, 5,400 for Teddy Bridgewater. If uh, you're looking for a QB pump play, I like him. Uh, I particularly Prefer to pay up on FanDuel since all the QBs are expensive there. I'd rather just go go and pay for one, but I like uh, Bridgewater and DK. I like Javante Williams at 4,400, 5,500. We talked about it with Ronald Jones. You know, what you want is your young running backs or your guys that fumbled, well, however it stands, to get some confidence against some bad defenses. And I think that's exactly sh- what the Broncos should plan for is to get Javante Williams. Uh, a little bit of extra run in this game to get him some confidence, and he's cheap at 44 and 55. Sutton is now the clear number one in Denver with Jerry Judy out, 52 and 62. I think it's in play. I think Noah Fant is going to take a bump up with Judy out as well, 42 and 57. Um, and then, you know, if you want some garbage time, uh, I think some of these receivers for uh, Jacksonville could be in play. Marvin Jones at 47 is the cheapest option on DK. Uh, LaVisca at 56 is the cheapest option on FanDuel. So I think those are some good plays as well. Yeah, I don't mind this as a game stack. Two defenses that I can definitely get exploited here. I like the idea of going, and it's cheap too. Like you said, like a Bridgewater, Patrick, or Hamler. I prefer Patrick, but Hamler's got kind of that take off the top ability. And Font paired up with like a Marvin Jones. I think that can be a very nice, cheap, fun, affordable game stack that allows you to get some beasts with the rest of your lineup. Uh, so I think I'm actually have to build one of those. So I like a little Denver Jacksonville action with you. And the, the value is the big reason why I'm starting to like that one in that matchup. Houston at Cleveland, talking about that team that beat down the Jacksonville Jaguars. Problem is, is Cleveland's minus 12 and a half point favorites at home over under 47 and a half. This screams just pound the rock, Bachman. Yeah. So uh, Kareem Hunt at 5,800, uh, especially in potential garbage time i like here a lot i also like uh brandon cooks in this game 5900 and 6600 as the houston texans should be playing from behind also look i'll say that philip Lindsay at 46 and 49 is a good buy i think he's going to get more playing time than uh david johnson and mark ingram is going to be able to pound the rock because they're up and i don't know if, how much he's going to get to play the rest of the season anyway, because how many leads are they going to have? When do they play Jacksonville again? You know what I mean? So uh, I think that uh, those are the guys that I like in this game, specifically uh, Hunt because of potential garbage time and uh, Cooks and Lindsey. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting game for sure. I think um, you could go with Chubb if you want. Hope he gets gets the run before it gets too crazy. Kareem Hunt will get his as well, as you mentioned. So you definitely have that going for you. And then on the flip side, um brandon cooks i was in on him going into the season and it proved out to be week one pretty nicely they're going to keep throwing him the rock ty god can throw the ball we know this is is how it's going to play out so i'm definitely on board with that scenario and um no obj this week makes things a little more interesting so you got to keep an eye on that one uh might be in play yeah so i'm thinking you might have a little bit uh, of other options to say the least with um Higgins didn't get much action. It was pretty much Schwartz, I think, last week. Higgins got a total of like two targets. He had Peoples Jones out there. I think he got a little bit of run as well. So you could look for some cheaper options if you want, or just I wouldn't worry too much about that, to be totally honest. So yeah, <laughs> give give me um give me the uh the, the cooks is probably my favorite play of the entire game. So I'm with you there. The Los Angeles Rams at the Indianapolis Colts. Rams minus three and a half point road favorites in this one, over under 49. Man, this Rams offense is good, Boggs. They're going to be some fantasy goodness for a while, and they're still cheap right now. Yeah, uh, in in this game, uh, look, Daryl Henderson. Uh, I think this game could get away from the Colts pretty quick, and uh, you know, Sony Michelle isn't quite established yet. So, fifty seven hundred, sixty four hundred, I think is a decent price to pay. Um, you know, Cooper Cup is expensive at six thousand sixty two hundred, but he was almost exclusively the second half, uh, this the second half of the game target for Matt Stafford. Um, maybe Zach Pascal in some uh, you know garbage time here. Maybe Naheem Hines at forty seven and fifty one hundred at some garbage time. So there's definitely some pieces to buy in this game. Yeah, I, I'm going to be stacking here. This is a game where I like the over quite a bit. 
We talked about it on the betting show. I like uh, Matt Stafford in this game at that price point. It is really nice, 64 on DK, 75 on FanDuel. I like the um, the idea of uh, using some other receiving options on the Rams. You mentioned Cooper Cup as a nice value. I will say this past week I was quite surprised um, seeing Van Jefferson getting a lot of run there for the Rams as well. He's 35 on DK, 49 on FanDuel. So that could be a nice cheap option with like a Higby or something if you don't want to go crazy. And then uh, on the, the Indianapolis side, it's tough because – you know, Pittman had the or uh, Pas- it was Pascal had the big game. Pittman let us all down. That's what yeah. it was. Uh, Pascal had the big game. I just don't know who to count on. As long as it's gonna be like Campbell, Pascal, Pittman, it's gonna be a, a revolving door. What I think you could do though is Naheem Hines at forty-seven on DK, fifty-one on Fanduel. I think you might get a lot of action uh, with a short passing game out of the backfield. So that could be a fun angle there, or just stack the Rams and don't worry about a game stack. I think the Rams <laughs> are gonna, the Rams might be like the miniature Chiefs right now. Get them while they're cheap. Stack them up. It's just not as locked in as Kelsey Hill and Mahomes. It's a little different there, but you could have a lot of fun to say the least. Las, Ve- Las Vegas Raiders at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh minus five and a half at home. Over under 47 in this one. Pittsburgh coming off the big dub. Vegas coming off the big dub. How do you see this one playing out? Look, I, I said it in the betting show. I don't like this game that much. So there's not going to be a lot to pick through uh, for me. I think Deontay Johnson is in play every single week. And because the Steelers do like to give up uh, the big play every once in a while, I think Henry Ruggs is a decent play at 37 and 55 because he's so cheap. If you're looking for like a punt spot, I think uh, he's a good option. I think Darren Waller is probably in play if you want to pay up for him every single week. I think Pat Freermuth, who got more snaps than Eric Ebron, could be a decent punt tight end as well. And either defense that you wanted to take here is okay to me too. Uh, other than that, I'm not going to Najee. I'm not going to Jacobs. No car, no Roethlisberger for me. Probably not going to reach for Dujer Claypool. So that's how I see this game. Yeah, no, I, I kind of, I'm. It's hard to take players like you said in this game, so I'm not in love with a ton of it. Um, we did see Deontay get ten targets last game, which was nice. But yeah, you mentioned uh, Pat Firemuth. He only had one target, but he did get a lot more snaps, like you said. So maybe there's something to it. I don't know. It's a tough game for me to not to nail down. I do like Deontay pretty much every week, like you said. I think I'm just gonna full fade this game. I'm just gonna hope uh, it's a tight game and an entertaining game. But I'll pretty much pass. There's a few other games I like better, like this next one. We're going to break down for you. Minnesota at the Arizona Cardinals. And this one, Arizona minus three and a half at home, over under 50 and a half. It is Kyler Murray season, everybody. And he's still, he's expensive, but not expensive enough, I think. <laughs> I mean, you know, whoever you want to play in this game. Kyler, you can go to him. Uh, I kind of like Chase Edmonds here. Uh, Hopkins is huge. Uh, I I love this game. Uh, I think you could go to Dalvin Cook, even though he's super expensive. Um, he's not my favorite, but I understand getting him. I think I'd rather pay for Thielen or Jefferson at 71 and 74. I think KJ Osborne is in play at a very cheap 33. Oh, man. I can't decide if I like Osborne or Rugs more. I think probably Osborne, just because I don't trust that. The Cardinals game environment, I go Osborne. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, he's a good option as well. Um, I'm not really interested in Kirk. Uh, I'm not interested in more yet. I'm never interested in AJ Green. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I kind of that's what I kind of like in this game is Murray. I mean, if you ever want to play Hopkins, uh, feel free, uh, and um, probably Jefferson Thielen and Osborne. Yeah, this is an interesting one because I love Murray and Hopkins. Like you said, you could always play. It's got a, like we're already sounding like the Mahomes to Hill combination here. There's not <laughs> another expensive guy, thank goodness. What I do think is interesting, though, is I, I'm with you. Adrian Green's not fun to play, but Hopkins had eight targets last week. Green had six. And Green's $3,700 on DK. He's 53 on Fandle. Fandle, it's too expensive, but 37 on DK has got my attention, at least. <laughs> and everybody loves Rondell Moore. They're like, oh, he played like 15 snaps, but he got like seven targets and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's great. Can you do that every week? Cause that's pretty damn efficient. So um, I think he's going to be good. I just don't know when Hopkins is the guy you want. Don't hate the AJ green thing for value, but bring it back with that Thielen Jefferson combo. Thielen's the red zone machine. You got Jefferson. Or like you said, if you just want to go Osborne for value, I love this game. I love it in a big, big yeah. way. In reality, I should almost use Kirk cousins, but I love Kyler Murray more, <laughs> but I, I think, I think Minnesota is going to have to throw to keep up with this game. So that's yeah. where Kirk Cousins comes into play. It's like a game theory play. So in theory, I should go Cousins and get two of the receivers 
and then bring it back with Hopkins. It's much more affordable that way too. So I think that's the thing. And Hopkins had two red zone targets last week more than anybody else on the team. So I think that's an angle to go with if you want to be a little different. I think most will go to Kyler Murray in that game. New England at the New York Jets. This is going to be so much fun. New England's minus four on the road against the Jets, over under 42 and a half. Bogman, honestly, it's like uh, this is a tough one to get any DFS appeal to me, at least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe if you want to be like a contrarian and go with Mac Jones and Jacoby Myers against a rough Jets defense, fine. Uh, Corey Davis could be a guy that's ending up in play every single week as well. Um, I think the I think the Pats tight ends probably eat into each other. Uh, I don't want to do running backs for the Patriots really ever. Unless we see like a month of Damian Harris just getting 20 touches. Yep. Uh, I don't want to mess with him, especially he had the fumble at the end of the game that lost it for them. Did that put him in Belichick's doghouse? You know what I mean? So uh, I always, uh, you know, I think I'll give Croft two more weeks to be in play at tight end uh, 29 and 47, but he didn't get a lot of action last week. And there's other guys that I like. So um, probably pretty much Corey Davis, and Mac Jones and maybe Jacoby Myers. That's what I like here. Yeah, I'm with you on uh, Corey Davis. Did you know that Brock, Braxton Berrios had seven targets last week? Yeah, I just think, you know, uh, James 39 Crowder, total air yards. He didn't do anything, but yeah. yeah Cr- Crowder's going to come off the, the COVID list eventually, so uh, I, I think he's going to be okay. So I'm just not interested in Berrios. Yeah, Croft had five targets, six targets went to uh, the other tight end over there, Ryan Griffin. So typical rookie using his little safety valves there. <laughs> but Corey Davis was the main attraction. He had all the red zone targets, all one of them. He had 118 air yards. Uh, he's cheap. I loved him last week. Him, Cooks, and Jones, Marvin Jones, are just like the teams are so bad they're going to pepper their veterans. That's how it's going to go. So I, I like Corey Davis as a great value play in this game. Um I could see the Jacoby Myers appeal. He was really close to breaking out last week. Just couldn't get over the hump. Um, he had nine targets, uh, seven Aguilar, seven white, but he led the team in targets. He looked really, really good. He even had a red zone target, one of the three red zone targets. So I could see Myers as a value as well. Just not a ton of this game I'm too excited about. New Orleans at Carolina on this one. It should be a fun one, actually. New Orleans minus three, over under 44 and a half here. Does Jameis Winston keep things going, Bogman? Uh, I mean... I think he can against Carolina, right? Uh, and he's a decent price at 61 and 77. So we're going to say he's in play. Uh, Callaway didn't look great. Uh, Troutman had a bunch of snaps uh, and he's cheap at 3,4500. I mean, between him and like Conklin and uh, Freermuth, I think I'd rather take Troutman. I think he's going to have to start getting involved because they're not going to win 38 to three. Uh, Jawan Johnson could be a red zone target, but I'm just not interested in paying for him. Uh, Alvin Kamara is the big guy on the Saints side. Christian McCaffrey, you can take any single week. He's always expensive. Um, not really in love with uh, the wide receiver options. If I had to pick one, it would definitely be DJ Moore. Um, but yeah, I mean, Winston, Kamara, Troutman, McCaffrey, Moore. That's what I would say is in play here. Yeah, I love me some Kamara. love me some McCaffrey. McCaffrey's already priced up like it's three years ago, which is great. Um, so you, you can go those routes. If you want to get uh, freaky and you want to just look at guys that got the, uh, the tournament appeal to you, Deontay Harris was getting the deep passes for New Orleans. If you want, if you think um, that Winston's going to try to break one off the top, you can go that route. Or on the flip side, um, you know, like, like I like DJ Moore, but Terrace Marshall I think could be a nice value as well. Got six targets to Moore's eight. He's only $3,300 on DK, 5K on FanDuel. So you can get a couple cheap tournament type plays between Carolina and New Orleans, but as a whole, another game I'm not super super in love with on this slate. A couple more games to go for years: San Francisco at the Philadelphia Eagles. The Niners are three and a half point road favorites, over under forty nine and a half. No Raheem Mostert, Bogman. So where are you looking at on this game, dude? I like Eli Mitchell at five thousand. Uh, I think uh, he is going to lead, and I know that. Uh, everyone's afraid of Kyle Shanahan, and that's why Eli is at this price. Um, I think he's going to be the lead back here. Uh, you know, they bench Sermon for a reason. So could Sermon get uh, the most carries and the goal line stuff? He could, sure, but uh, he's playing by default at this point. So let's not forget that. So uh, I like Eli Mitchell here for the Niners. Um, on the uh, on the Eagles side, it kind of depends on how you see this game is going because we talked about on the betting show yesterday. I think it's either going to be 
the Niners just route and smash Jalen Hurts into the ground with that good pass rush, or they're, they're terrible in the back end. We saw a tail two halves for the Niners last week against Detroit in that they smashed him for the first half, got exposed in the second half. So I think Devontae Smith could be in play at 54 and 56, but Rager at 41 and 52 might be the better buy here. So I think both those uh, receivers are in play. I'm not interested in Sanders or Gainwell. Um, not too interested in Debo here or uh, Jimmy G this week. Kittle's always in play, of course. But uh, for me, I'm really interested in Eli Mitchell, Smith, and Rager. I think that Rager call is a great call when it comes to um, saving some money on this play to be a little sneaky because just if, um, he was second in the team in targets last week. Very, very good. They, know they said the rapport in camp was getting better and better with Hurts. I also think Dallas Goddard's an interesting play with Zach Hurts getting hurt, so he should have a little more just uh, main tight end action over there for Philadelphia. And then I love the price on Kittle. We talked about how expensive Waller was. There's no Kelsey. Getting Kittle at 64 on DK and 67 on FanDuel, if you are one that pays up for tight end, I know not everybody does, I think it's a very good value. And most weeks we'll see Kittle more expensive, I think, as the season goes on. So you can get some okay value in this game. Um, if you want to go with Jalen Hurts, you can. I think the Niners kind of have their way with this, but I don't mind getting some receiving action, especially on that uh, that Philadelphia side if they have to try to keep up in this game. Last game on the slate, the Tennessee Titans head into Seattle for a fun one here. Seattle minus five and a half at home over under 54. What do you like on this one, Bogman? I mean, uh, I think Metcalf is going to have a huge game here. I know it's expensive at 76 and 7,000, but we just saw DeAndre Hopkins dominate this Tennessee defense. I think Russell Wilson could be a play in play at 7,500 and 8,500. Um, Chris Carson could be in play here against this uh, Tennessee defense that was kind of non-existent last week. You can always play Lockett, I, I feel like, but he's always kind of expensive. Um, I also like Julio. I think I, I don't know how how often we're going to get Julio at 6,300 or cheaper this year. I think he could go off. Let's remember the Seahawks secondary is still not great. So DJ Reed is going to have his hands full with Julio Jones this week. So uh, I like Julio. I like Metcalf. I like Russ, Carson, and Lockett. Yeah, the, the Wilson, Lockett, Metcalf combo is pretty darn nice. Pretty expensive, but pretty darn nice in this game as they should eat yet again, like you mentioned on the betting show. Seattle's uh, 12th man is finally going to be in the, st in the, in the stands. And it's going to be insanity in that yeah. stadium. So pray for the, the Titans, especially early in that game. Could be a fun one to watch them get up early. Uh, Jones is cheap. I'm with you, Julio, for sure. A.J. Brown is a, is a red zone machine. I'm not sure I'm in love with it, but I at least want to point out Chester Rogers had six targets just like Julio and nearly the same amount of air yards as Julio had last week. I'm not a Chester Rogers guy, but I'm just saying he's free, and if they're having to pass to keep up, they're going to have to spread it around a little more. So that could be one of those sneaky, long shot type plays. Not a great one, but could be an interesting one. All right, Bogman, that wraps up all 13 games on this main slate. Who are you stacking up this week? I mean, I think there's plenty of spots to stack. I think uh, I kind of like that little Seattle stack that I talked about. I think you can uh, stack you know, uh, Cardinals against the Vikings or Vikings to play catch up against the Cardinals. Um, I think you could potentially uh stack mm, i was gonna say i was gonna say cleveland but i i think they might just uh, go uh, denver is probably my, denver's my favorite one you know yeah. because i think they're gonna dominate uh there so denver is my favorite one uh we like that little chicago stack against yep. cincinnati's poorest defense as well and then just the bucks whoever you want to take on the bucks atlanta looks rough right now yeah, that Cincy Chicago game. The uh, I kind of prefer using Joe Burrows because Andy Dalton, but I get it because it's also something we talked about in the betting show. Wouldn't be shocked if Fields plays a lot in this game still. So it's kind of scary knowing you're going to roll the dice with a guy that might not even play. But I like some action that Cincy Chicago game, especially bringing it back with uh, Allen Robinson is an angle there for sure. I love the Dallas Chargers game. Big big fan of that one. And most people will be though. Just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. The Denver stack is very very affordable. I like that a lot. Bringing it back with some Jags. As you said, and then I love the Ram stack. Um, don't mind a little Arizona game, Arizona Minnesota action. Talked about if you want to be different, use C Cousins over uh, Murray could be your angle on that one. And then last but not least, I'm with you on Seattle. That could be a a big one as well. All right, the moment everyone has been waiting for, the touchdown pick of the week. Uh, last week, Dalvin Cook got there. Just saying. So we got some free swag, but Mostert um, got hurt. 
yeah, I can't help that thing. It's football. It's it's yeah. most true. Most kidding. Um, but yeah, yeah you can follow <laughs> you can follow Line Star on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star NFL. And besides all the great news and content that they tweet out over there, they tweet out the touchdown picks of the week for myself, Bogman, and Ryan Humphreys. And uh, if you retweet that tweet, three lucky people will be picked with each one of us. If our guy scores a touchdown, you win some free swag. So Bogman, week two action. Running back, receiver, tight end, pick one. Who's your touchdown pick of the week? Give me DK Metcalf against that Titans defense. We saw Hopkins get in there twice. I think Metcalf has got to do it at least once this week. So DK Metcalf against the Titans. Yeah, he's going to eat. That's a good call. It's a pretty, pretty good call with some DK Metcalf action in here. If I believe Cleveland's going to pound the rock the way I say they are, give me some Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb finding the end zone there uh, in that for the, for the Cleveland Browns. I think that's a... I was going to go with A-Rob because I've been talking him up so much. He better find the darn end zone this week. But uh, give me Nick Chubb. I'll take some Nick Chubb. You take DK Metcalf, who I think is in for a big, big game. Big game. So I'm with you there. We'll see who Ryan Humphreys picks. But feeling good week two. Week two is going to be a big one over here at Lions Star and for the crew. So make sure you check out Bogman on Twitter at Bogman Sports. Check me out on Twitter at BDNTrick. And check out Thrive Fantasy using promo code Lions Star. But we'll be back with you guys next week. We'll be back with you guys on Tuesday with the recap episode. But good luck, everybody. See ya. Thanks for listening to Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Drive Fantasy. Please like, comment, subscribe, and rate for good karma in your fantasy football games.